All right, we got no time to waste. It's your boy, No Big Deal Wow, with uh, Creative Control, the podcast where we jump into music, God, and the intersection of creativity and faith. My guest today really needs, truly needs no introduction. Unfortunately. Uh, the, the, the infamous, the uh, world-renowned. World-renowned is crazy. Uh, three-time stellar-winning artist john Keith. not even close welcome to the show not even almost welcome close. to the show y'all man. heard when he said section right huh <laughs> section section i said three times stellar winning before that artist you said section i don't section do you take shin off that's crazy all right sex. well athanasios you're gonna have uh your work cut out for you for this edit <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um no nah, welcome to the show man yeah yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, just so you guys know, man, Dill kept this joint a secret from me, bro. I've been telling him to do a podcast forever, and he kept this a secret. But it's okay, I forgive him. The joint is great. You you told me that Indie Tribe should do a podcast, not me. Indie Tribe still could do a podcast. Is ain't Indie Tribe doing a podcast? No, this is this is my solo podcast. Oh, Creative oh okay. Control with, I thought this was like our. Okay, yeah. no, I got you. No, yeah. Um. Congrats, man. Congrats on your podcast. I think podcast. we should talk about why Indie Tribe doesn't have a podcast. All right, here we go. Listen, I'm not moving to Nashville. God doesn't want me here. That's, that is the reason that Indie yeah, Tribe Yeah, it's God's fault. He wants podcast. me to suffer and grow in my character. <laughs> if suffering produces the other things. I don't remember the verse. Yeah. All the rest of it. Yeah, it's like endurance. and Endurance and then character. And, character. Yeah. And yeah. character other stuff right 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 I, I mean i support it you know what i'm saying yeah. um but the fans might not yeah and i get it i get that's the problem i get it guys uh so you are in town today mm-hmm. because of the prey tour yes sir with 1k few and y'all are selling out shows me few aha peace son um it's going crazy footage looks nuts from it yeah it's been great it's been really good I, uh, it's, it's been the first tour that I've been on that's fantastic. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been on two other ones. Yeah. Invasion tour was Job. Okay. From the Bible. Wow. And, uh, the first tour, it was still cool, but I don't really count. It was 2018. It was just me and Ruslan. And, oh, yeah. And that was it. It's kind of crazy you haven't been on more tours. I think probably the viewers will well, think. I'm the I'm the king of almost going on tours. If How you so? knew the amount of tours that I almost went on. Let's let's do that. Let's run down the tours okay. you have almost go- gone on. Okay. Glory Nights 1 and 2. <laughs> let's start off strong. Glory Nights 1 and 2. Uh, the Beautiful Tour. The beautiful okay. Tour West Coast Leg. Okay. Um, There was a tour with Aaron Cole and Caleb Mitchell. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. Out, out of there. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That one just didn't happen. Though, it just right? didn't happen. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. So that wasn't their yeah, fault. Yeah, like yeah, the no, other ones were no, kind of no. the. Yeah. Uh, Social Club. Yeah. That one also didn't happen. Okay. But it was. It, I was told that it was very set in motion. Okay. Didn't happen. Um. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm the king of like almost. Growing. Yeah. Well, now is your era. It's your tour era. I guess so. This year, you know, God wanted to wait until I had a kid and was just like, let's let's get this guy away from this kid. Yeah. Let's get this guy out of here. Yeah. We got to make sure he spends as little time with this kid as possible. And I'm like, you know what? If I don't see him till he's like two or three, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. That's that's not good. That's not a good message. Well, to, well, depends on know. who you ask. I guess that's true. How is being a father? I'll, I'll let you know when, when I experience it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dark. <laughs> This is such a dark start to this. Let's man, let's rewind, bro, because I feel like that that was no, a very no, that was a very I dark that, start. I say that because I'm a I'm a dad technically. I don't feel like a dad yet. It's though. not getting better yet. No, I don't feel like a dad yet though. He's just kind of like a blob of anger and hunger. Yeah, you said he hasn't he doesn't really smile. He just did it. He just smiled. I I we had a 3-day break. I went home and he smiled at me for the first time. Wow. Yeah. How was that? Magical moment. Yeah. But still he comes by honestly, I feel like. A smiling, angry, hungry blob. Yeah. You know, I'm not like I'm not doing any fathering yet. Yeah. Jordan is doing mothering because yeah. it's, it's she's nurturing him. D- 
Does he smile fun. at her? Way more. Yeah. He, he smiles at her and makes noises too. He's like, ah, ha, ha. yeah. Me and now this is this is also not a lie. <laughs> Every single time he smiles at me, it's followed immediately by sadness. <laughs> he goes like this. He's like, dang. And I'm like, damn, bro, I didn't even do nothing. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm here. I'm being myself. Yeah. And you just. Are you smiling at him? Yeah. Okay. I'm doing all the things. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm yeah, like yeah. doing all the baby faces. I don't yeah. do baby talk to him because I'm yeah. not. You, know, you just talk to him like an adult. Yeah. He's a man. Yeah. And I'm like, that might be the issue. Maybe he's like. Nah, bro, because here's the thing. Randall's don't. We don't give birth to babies, bro. I'm thinking, though, if if Jordan is speaking to him. In baby talk, which I'm assuming she is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she's getting most of the smiles. I think the main reason she's not she's getting most of the smiles is though is because she she's he's I think he's he's not it's not <laughs> okay. He's not gonna smile, that, he's that, not gonna smile at a guy. That opens what? up so many It is what it is, man. Look, we're here is twenty twenty four. And he's not. He's not. Uh huh. He he likes to smile at women. All right. So you know, I think we probably and a lot of our viewers take for granted like our connection, how we know each other, and all that. But there's a lot of people who are tuned into the podcast yeah. who may not be tapped into Indie Tribe, how we met, and all that. So yeah. from your recollection, how did we meet? Um, we met in. 2017 it was the canopy tour so uh-huh. it was, it's not far off but but not quite there yeah so uh-huh. it was the canopy tour it was dill um lauren jerry Mana, yeah what up rg oh shoot and, yeah and michael v that's true and that was indie tribe no i'm just kidding no but you know um yeah they were on tour i pulled up with i pulled up with uh ruslan and um, I had actually been listening to your music already for a while. Um, actually, everyone on there, everyone that was on that tour, I was a fan of at the time. I had a, I had connected with RG very briefly mm. um, before that. And so he was the only one when I pulled up, he was like, oh, John. Everyone else, I was meeting him for the first time. And... uh yeah, yeah, I remember we had I, I had asked you to get on a song and you said hey, no. <laughs> and then Wait, did um, you ask me at the tour? I don't remember that at all. We, it was very it was brief and you actually didn't say it yet. You said yeah, send me something and then Ruslan sent it to you for me. Okay, I do That's remember you Ruslan were like, you sending were like, absolutely not. It's for the best. That song was terrible. I I didn't song. like the song. All right, okay. I I didn't okay. like the song. All right, okay. You don't have to say I remember it. getting it. And it just, you know, it wasn't the right time. Okay. This wasn't, you know. Oh. You, know, you didn't have to say he didn't like the song. I think, I mean, we were already at that point. It was a bad song. It was a bad song. Right. <laughs> just so, let it rock. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> no, but yeah, so we, so is that, um, my, my, which is weird because my memory is impeccable, but my you timeline have a good for, my timeline for, when we got close is very muddy. I don't, I don't. I'm wondering if we, I'm wondering if, did we get close in the group message with, with, I think that is with Joey Vontes. I think that is. Oh, Rockstar JT, Paris Carriz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that actually is what it was. So, so it was that we met again in 28. I remember everything. We met again in 2018 when I was on tour with Ruslan. That was at South by Southwest. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after that, you had gotten my number from Ruslan for your enemies campaign. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then oh, after, man, sometime legendary. after that is when Joey Vontes got me, you, Paris, and Rockstar JT all on his album mm-hmm. and then was aaron cole in that group message too never he was on the sh- he was on the song though yeah he was on the song but that was before that was before that song happened after the group chat 
Oh, okay. It was actually on. It was. It was on. Legends never die. Is when we. Is when we okay, all. Okay. 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 And then Rockstar JZ just put Mike Hill in that group chat. So it was just all of us, and we just. It was in there, for the song. But then we just stayed in there, and we just were always talking about stuff. And, um, yeah, you know, we kind of got close in there, and then, um, you know, at this time, Indie Tribe consisted of, you, Mowgli, Jerry Mana. RG and Satan. And oh, I, I, I don't remember the fifth member. I thought, oh, okay. No, I just thought with it doesn't ring a bell. The amount of dissension, I just I figured he was in there somewhere. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, well. No, um, yeah. So you know, we just kind of got close in there, and then, uh, yeah. I mean, after that, I you know, I, it was like 2019. I was planning on leaving King's Dream, um, but I I worked on a we did Olympus and we did that song Bag. Yeah, we we which Bag still like it still it still goes, goes up. It's, I don't, it's very very surprising. I'm not gonna yeah. Lie people to you. still really rock with the song Bag. Like st- still one of the the top. Sh- like so many people were like they tell me a lot of people tell me yo, um, like. This uh, there's two artists right now that we know. I don't. I'm not gonna put their names out there because I don't know if they even if they want. But there's two artists that have told me separately that, and they're like successful artists right now. Yeah, told me that bags with me and you was the reason that they got into this. Oh, that's crazy. And I'm like, wow. That's I know the artist you're talking about. I didn't realize that was the song that yeah. you didn't realize both of them. I didn't realize that was the song. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I I knew that you know we had inspired them, but I didn't know that yeah. that song literally That's the inspired wind. it. It's crazy. That is crazy, and that video was like 110 degrees in Bro, Phoenix. We were in Fe- we drove out. Me and Zach drove out to Phoenix, and we shot a one take, and we got sushi afterwards. It was so hot, um, bro. Yeah, it was extremely hot. And this man Zach, we had no concept the for the for zero. for the None. music video. It was like pull this uh, pull this luggage around the corner, and then <laughs> and then you'll appear. Like, it was... It was just like, hey, man, let's just... But it was really weird. We stumbled upon that extremely empty street. There was yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody there. Yeah. It looked like COVID, but it was pre-COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID for sure. It was the... It was... It was the... Uh, it was COVID sample. It was a sample of COVID. A sample of COVID. I mean, it, it looked like a ghost town. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, so we shot... Yeah, we shot that video, and then, yeah, we just kind of... After I dropped Olympus, and then Indie Tribe broke up, and then... We know the rest of that story from there, but, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I think the the cool thing about, like, the, we'll say the reformation of Indie Tribe. Yeah. Since we're on creative control, the intersection of creativity and faith. But um, the reformation of Indie Tribe, we had all been friends for, like, years at that point, Mm -hmm. which I think is why this iteration of indie tribe is just like we were talking about it before the camera started rolling but it's like bro if music stopped tomorrow like this roster would still be completely yeah. tied in like yeah. our families are tied in my mom like yeah that's you know it. what i mean like they were over our house not not on thanksgiving but it was close to thanksgiving and so we had like a just like a giant that was crazy thing. yeah that was fire which was just it's just a crazy thing it was like my family and your family but it was just like well yeah it's the same archetype of yeah. people we also like, don't we're also not a hundred percent certain that we're not blood related we're we're we are not because our dads have family yeah. from from arkansas yeah both of them and and, and they're a lot they're, there's a lot of similarities you know what i'm saying and then also i look bald black men of a certain age yeah Certain demeanor, and then looking at my dad as a teen, I just saw a picture of him as a teenager for the first time. Like, and and I was like, he didn't really look like any of us, but he did look like Dustin. <laughs> he looked like my. I was like, <laughs> he actually did though. He looked like Dustin, like his so nose like, and stuff. Man, we, I'm yeah. not a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not. Yeah, we might be. We we could be, and it would make a lot of things make sense. It really would, because me, you know, me and Dustin, the sixth member of any tribe. Um, is we're we're a lot alike, yeah. It's, it's very, very true. It's very crazy. 
uh, kind of like the, like Dustin is like Dark John. You know what I mean? Yeah, but now that's figuratively and literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Because he is, he's black. Wow. All right. So, uh, all right. So what would you say is our best memory together? Best memory together? Best memory together. I'll make you think. <laughs> There's so many. I just. Okay. Uh, I, I. It's tough. That's a tough question. I think of, my brain immediately goes to one of the festivals. Yeah. That's that's what that's what goes to the top of my head. But that's true. I mean there's there is a lot to pick from. Coming off stage uh last year at the festival was a crazy moment. Yeah, that was a very wild moment. Yeah. You were crying. I was crying. Michael was crying. Yeah. I wasn't. You weren't crying. I don't do that. You were you were doing your I am respectful of y'all crying face. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I respect I respect this I'm not gonna join in Yeah 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 But I do that's respect you, it Yeah and That is so Yeah That's funny Yeah And uh I don't know I also think about This This is just one of my favorite memories But Tribal Council For Uh For Low Blow When it was like 3.30 in the morning Last oh, day yeah And like I came out With the verse for Uh TC2 Yeah And like we're all delirious and the mic is in the middle of the room where it yeah. like, it hadn't even been there. It's in the middle of the room. And like, I'm rapping that verse and like, everybody's like live reacting to it. Yeah. Like that was like a, that was a crazy, that was a crazy moment too. You guys notice how his, his favorite, his favorite moment okay. puts him right at the center. Well, right. At, he was, he's the star. Uh, he's the star of his moment. So what is our worst memory together? Uh, the worst the worst memory yeah we have we haven't been on tour together yet which usually worst memories come from tour worst memory is tough because i'm like worst memory to me when i think of a worst memory with someone i think of a worst memory like my brain goes to like being at odds with somebody yeah but i guess it could just be like a terrible situation that we were right, both right, right. in at the same time right I'm thinking the worst the worst memory is probably the, that last meeting with the with them who shall not oh, be named. Oh <laughs> yeah, facts, facts, facts. That was probably that was probably Yeah, it. that's true. Yeah, we're not gonna Yeah. <laughs> we're not we're not gonna do that. We don't even have to do that. That's true though. That probably is. so what so I we don't really have that many like it's not like bad not a whole lot of bad we memories. We don't actually have it's not a there's not a lot of bad stuff that happens. Oh I know I know I know what it is and we can talk about it and it's kind of like same type of thing, but personnel is different. Uh, my, I would say my worst memory is when you and Michael got into it. Oh man, <laughs> that was bad. Well, uh, I was gonna say which time, but that I already know which one you're well, talking about. Well, no, which time actually makes it, but definitely uh, that Ho one. Holy Smoke sessions or like Tribe Week. Yeah, Tribe Week. That one. Yeah, that, that one, one was is bad. probably. You guys have a history of like Michael's my brother, man, and and we and we fight. We actually haven't in a long time because Since then, yeah, because that's the last time. Mainly, I was like, you know, I I got to a level. We both got to a very dangerous level. Yeah, and I am, I'm the kind of person where you know I got anger issues. So like, I'm the kind of person where I get to a certain level. Logic and reason is not there for me. Yeah, meaning there's not a single perceivable universe yeah i know where you're going with this where i can ever present any kind of physical challenge for michael <laughs> it just it doesn't exist yeah but yeah i get to a certain level of anger and it's like it doesn't matter let's get it yeah and and he also was at a level of just like and, and you know and so I, that that time is like we both were like we don't we don't want to we don't want to get there again and i'm also like i, I was telling you know saying i was telling you before that I just you know I got a problem with my mouth so I'm like yeah. I want to make sure if I get angry like that I don't ever want to talk to anybody let alone you know yeah. saying like my brother like like that yeah you know what I'm saying so 
Um, that that was probably the that was probably the worst for sure. Yeah, that that actually probably was the worst. That one was yeah. bad enough. Like it was like, all right, back to basics. We're sitting down. We're pulling out the yeah. Bible. <laughs> like we're going just back to basics. Like, <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's uh, you know what I mean, um, all yeah, right. And true. then favorite favorite song that we have together because we favorite actually song? have a lot. <sighs> Uh, the favorite song. What did you just say? Don't worry about it, bro. You're always so nosy. Was it the thing you learned on the mission trip? No, no, no. Oh, oh, man, I'm fluent in Spanish. You're not fluent in Spanish. I'm fluent in Spanish. No. Can you prove it? I know you're not fluent can in Spanish. Can you prove it? I can't prove it, but I know you're <laughs> and not. here we are, guys. But can you prove <laughs> that you're fluent? Yes. Okay, prove that you're fluent in Spanish. Okay. That's... One statement. You, you do, do you know? Do, how do you know? Do another one. All I know is you said oh, something about. Me regalo una patacion para un festival sábado todos los cuatro gratis. That's the one. So, that's so, the one from the mission trip. He doesn't know that. That's about the. What did I that's say? That's about the festival on Saturday. Okay, you heard yeah. you heard festival and you just assumed <laughs> that. On Saturday. But, here yeah, we yeah, go, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 you know two you don't, statements. You don't know Spanish. You, <laughs> you have one about you're shoes not fluent and in one Spanish. about a festival. On you're not Saturday. fluent in Spanish, but neither am I, so I can't tell you that yeah. you're not fluent in Spanish. That doesn't even work. Yeah. That's not logic. Yeah. That's just hearsay. Uh huh. So favorite song? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say. You know what? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. What? Nah. <laughs> nah, I had this like is two, unclippable it because was, this is two minutes and two minutes and thirty seconds. It was it was between Chose and Pop Funko. Yeah. Pop Funko is slept it's on. It's very, very slept on. Very, I really thought that drone was gonna go up way more. Um but I like that one because uh that verse is where we got the name upper hand from. Oh yeah. Um, That's right. And that was lit. And then Chose, because your verse on Chose was ridiculous. Chose is kind of slept on, too. A little bit, but also not really. Jordan's had, like, over a million streams. It's Yeah. Yeah. It's the one that goes up the most at Chose, for sure. Yeah, uh, every I mean, time I perform that killer. one, they're, Godson showed up. In yeah. the whip. Like, they're they're going it's a show up. killer. That's the one That's every, show, every show. Sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not mad at that, for sure. Show killer. All right, so... One thing that uh, a thing about you, which this was this was like something that we talked about with Sarah, too, is that you have a very big personality. You have you're very funny in person, very loud. Funny. Uh, how? Uh, just you're, kidding. I'm just kidding. You're, good fellas. you're funny. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, like one of our guests said, obnoxious in public. So, OK, well, um, but your music is kind of like depressing. It's not what you would expect in in some sense when you meet, you know, if if you meet John and he's the life of the party, so to speak, and then you listen to his music, it's like, yeah, your music is kind of like the counterbalance to to what's going on right now, you know. Life of the party, everybody. You know? Mm -hmm. You know it? Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. And yeah. I don't think about the fact that Sarah's actually the same way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I yeah, so we, we have like this pattern of like people with these big, funny personalities, and then your music is kind of like where you get serious, where things can get dark, like where we talk about like mental health and things like that. And I want, I, what is your take on that? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, I'm like, it's. Cause it's also a funny thing that you know they roast me for. A, you guys roast me for a lot. Is when I talk about I don't like some things because it sounds happy. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Like, like, like that that Dirk and J Cole song. Yeah, I hate it. You just just off of way it, too happy. You like you're not like against the content no. of the song. Content's like, great. You're you're you know you're a you're reasonably anti violence. I hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I and I hate. And I, but I hate happy sounding songs. Yeah. Like that drum. Uh, if you look at the duo of the, uh, you know, the Hovian Forest songs. Yeah. Alter. Yeah. And then No Longer Bound. Yeah. I hate No Longer Bound. Yeah. Because it sounds so happy. Yeah. 
alter is like, oh man, you got me right there. Uh, John Keith's views are his and his alone. I hate, I hate, so, I hate no longer, bro. Just so everybody knows, not because it's a bad song. All it's hate just mail. too, it's too happy, man. John Keith at gmail dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everybody knows. We're clipping that, though. We're clipping that because people will definitely want to comment on that one. No, no, no. Don't clip it. No, we're clipping it. Um, so, no, but I, I understand what you're saying. There is a difference in sound between Alter and No Longer Bound. And you're saying that's the line right there Yeah. for the happy sounding. But, like, for instance, uh, Paul Russell does happy music in a, in a way that I can rock with. So you rock with. It sounds with- like, it's, it's like it's like slick happy. So boo thing, you like love it. Really? It's slick happy. That's very confusing. I'm not gonna lie. It's to not you. happy like everything's so great. I'm so happy to be here. You it know? It kinda is though. No, it's not. It's I, like, I like it. I like that. It's song. like, it's like, yo, you're my shorty and it feels good. What about the other one? The, oh, the other one is even better. Say cheese? Is even better. Say cheese. Stepping out purple Mercedes. That joint is slick. It's I wish slick. I had like a list of songs to go through with you right now because now I'm like interested in where the line Shoot is. Shoot them off. Well, I, I just don't chant, have them in my head right go now. Go through Chance songs. Okay, no problems. You and that yeah. one? Love it. Yeah, that makes sense. That one makes sense to me. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what. It's it's. it's you ha- pretty much just like Chance songs in general. I, yeah, I love Chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think there's going to be one. Mm, no, there's there's chant songs that that, um, uh, but not along this line. Like, yeah, you probably I don't, don't like don't, hot shower, hate. but that's not you like hot shower. I like hot shower. I, the one I, I there's one I don't hate. Uh, oh, music is all we got. Like yeah, 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 yeah. I don't hate it, but I don't. I, I'm gonna skip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna skip it. It's that's not really what you're talking about, though, right? I mean, it's it's happy sounding to me. It just it feels like ah, oh. okay. I wasn't a fan of the the okay. happy raps like era of like oh yeah co- like I rock oh, with what Kyle. A, what about okay yeah yeah what about uh like broccoli? Oh no, never. You broccoli. don't rock with broccoli. Never broccoli. That's my least favorite of both of them. Oh, least favorite of both of them. Yeah, and I like Yachty, and I like Kyle. I liked a lot less of Kyle's stuff because it was very broccoli happy was drum. Stuff. Drama and Yachty. Drama and Yachty, you're right. I'm thinking of uh I Spy. My bad. My oh, bad. so so broccoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broccoli, no. <laughs> but I spy no too. That okay. Sing broccoli for me. I can't remember uh, how Well it now sings. you got I Spy in my head. Yeah, uh, all I can think of is uh, I Spy. Uh uh. Now I got cash machine in my head, which is ruining it. Oh um bro- uh <laughs> <laughs> Just saying broccoli is not helping at all. No. Uh, we're going to, yeah. Oh, my God. If you play it, you're going to get flagged. Oh, that's that's a good idea. That's what people do on podcasts. They play like a second or whatever. Bro. Uh, I forgot I could Broccoli. No, it was only my no, third episode. It. Uh, bust down broccoliana. And all that oh, Wait. Be a, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I rocked with that one. Yeah. I didn't like I Spy. I rocked with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah that makes no, sense. No, I rock with broccoli. We spent way too much time on this. Yeah. One. So my yeah, I I don't know. When I'm making music, yeah. Like I just connect more with like the I don't know, like the deeper emotions or just <laughs> To catch myself right now almost, yes almost at a cuss word yeah. uh scary sounding stuff like the song i just dropped man down yeah mm-hmm. so do you think that it's like cathartic for you like does it feel spell cathartic spell cathartic no no don't spell it define cathartic cathartic is like it it feels i mean kind of related to therapeutic like it feels like yeah you're releasing yeah negative absolutely Energy. Absolutely. And even when if it's like even if it's not even negative energy, like uh the joint I just sent you, FaceTime. Yeah. FaceTime's hard. It's like it doesn't it's not s- sad per se, it's longing, yeah. but it, it does like it feels like romantic and like beautiful and like yeah. the strings and all that stuff. That's that's what I 
I like that. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just when I'm listening to something, even if I'm listening to stuff and I'm like, yo, I want to feel good. The feel good music that I want to listen to is like in the 50s. Oh, like yeah, yeah, Frank yeah. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Like, well, that still feels serious. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I, I feel Frank that. Frank Sinatra still feels like serious. It's happy, but I, I'm I'm not even saying the sound of it necessarily. I'm yeah. saying our experience with it because it's a classic. Yeah. I feel like Fly Me to the Moon. Fly doesn't, Me to the Moon. Yeah. It doesn't feel silly. Yeah. Like it feels like, I don't know, deep grounded happiness. Yes. You know? Grown up happiness. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Adult joy. Yeah. That sounds so depressing. No, I mean, I feel like you're hitting on something here. Like, I feel like <laughs> I I Adult don't know. Adult joy is definitely worse than child joy. Yeah, 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 for sure. That sucks. I I just was ignoring that part. But <laughs> but I think some of these songs may sound like you're just masking what's really going on in your life or in the world with this like band-aid of joy it does it, it seems like it doesn't hit you like it's authentic yeah yeah because especially with the like the the paul russell thing like it feels like it's just hitting you where you you feel connected to it in an authentic way versus like yeah i don't know but it, but yes but it also like i don't know it's something it's something about that it's something about the paul russell joints man that it just feels like do you like j cole's part on uh all my life no Really? That girl told me to keep it some positive ish. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right. All right. So um how has your faith um influenced your career? It hasn't. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's so crazy. No, uh it it is uh, like a lot a lot of people don't know. This is another thing that people don't know about you. A lot of people don't know that you are like, um, you have a serious and considerable depth depth when it comes to um, spirituality, when it comes to faith, like even when it comes to spiritual practices um, and your views are not like the run of the mill. Oh, I just, you know, was brought up in church and just like, you think deeply about these things. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm interested to know how you feel like um, your faith, yeah, intersects with your creativity, intersects with how you how you move in your career. I've I've in the beginning, it was just you know everything was you know it was uh, Jesus, 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 you know, and that's not negative at all. That's still a good thing. Um, what I think happened for me was. You know, as I'm as I matured and started to experience Jesus through other outlets than just things like church and the Bible, you know what I'm saying? Which those are both still very good things, and the and I would say like the biggest things, essential things, yeah, essential things, you know. But like, you know, as I started to grow in my relationship with God and it would be like, I go on a walk and I'm experiencing Yahweh through nature and through like b butterflies. Like one of the reasons that, that people don't realize, I, I <laughs> people are always like, yo, like what's the butterfly mean on all your stuff? Like what mm. does it represent? It doesn't represent anything. I fell in love with butterflies one day because like I was on a walk and this was like a little bit before the, uh, you know, a little bit before the process of making Eremos. And I was like in one of those pits and I went out and I felt, I just, you know, I went outside and I was just talking with God and I was like asking him to just show me like the beauty that's around me because I was like, I don't see it. Like everything seems bad mm. and everything seems like trash. And and he just kind of called my attention to like this butterfly. I was outside. And in that moment, I was like, bro, this is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just, and then I was just like, dude, th these are lit. And so like now, like one of the, one of the biggest ways that, it, you know, I 
commune with God is just going outside. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and spending time in his creation uh, and not just in these walls that we built and keep ourselves from, which is crazy. And, and you know, and it's like when you when you start to mature and and you walk in relationship with God and you're like, oh, it, this is not two separate things. It's not like oh, work and then, mm. you know, family and then spiritual stuff. It's like, no, no he's in all this and actually one of the things that i learned from you is like even listening what can i hear god saying through this thing that has nothing to do Mm. with with it like it has nothing immediately to do Mm -hmm. with like christianity or anything Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. like listening to kendrick lamar's last album Mm -hmm. and going kendrick is not a believer in jesus like we are Mm -hmm. and yet what could I be hearing God say through this, even if it's in disagreement with these things? Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, right. what is it that God is right. saying to? And so, like, when you start to experience life that life like that, it's like, okay, well, that's kind of what's pouring out of me now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm writing songs. I'm writing like love songs about my wife, mm-hmm. and like God is in that. God's mm-hmm. in that because. Like that's what God had intended for humanity and for me, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and um, or I, if I write a song, it's not a love song per se, or, or but it's just like a a song about relational issues or relational things that I'm walking through, um, with my wife, you know, or or even not even with my wife if it's if it's with wh- whoever. Mm-hmm. Like God uses relationships like a highlighter to either bring out characteristics of yours that He wants to remove or mm-hmm. he wants to like elevate and encourage mm-hmm. right and so it's like that's coming up in the songs it's like this is the thing that i always do and i found that out because i'm going through this thing with this person right now mm-hmm. and i know that god wants to take this away and like that's in the song and so it, it's less it's less like preachy mm-hmm. you know and it's more so like showing people what life with god can look yeah. like you know mm-hmm. um in a real sense and not just in a because the other thing i don't like i don't like when when people you know like there's this thing where it's like oh let's be let's do like sneaky christian music we're like mm. like we get him in the end ha it's christian got you you're yeah. safe now it's like no that's like, so you're, you're saying like okay i my end point is I'm going to tie a bow on this and it's going to be a Christian song, but I'm going to wrap it up in, Oh, it's a love song between a man and a woman. And then at the end, I'm going to get them with, guess what? It's, it's about God. Yeah. It's right. like that, that feels like ingenuine to me. It, yeah. it doesn't feel like, it feels like everything is like a, you know what? It feels like advertisement. Switch. Yeah. And it's like, that's not how art should feel. Yeah. Like it should feel like genuine and from the heart. And so it's like, if we have to, if I have to trick somebody, there you go. Into if you got to trick somebody into relationship with God, it's like is that how long is that going to last? Is that even a good representation of good, our God? You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't no. feel like he had to trick anybody. He didn't trick anybody. He, he was told like, you exactly what it was. <laughs> he told you how bad it's going to be. <laughs> exactly. He did the opposite bro, of the advertisement, bro, bro. Uh, and that you know how hard it's going to be. Like I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to misrepresent like no it's going to be very hard and it's going to be very worth it and it is the road yes. to true joy yes road um, to true joy and the reason i don't even through suffering literally I, through little suffering bro ruslan in his podcast brought up a point and i was like we always hear this um but i don't we don't really talk about it not in a real way you know we do the things where it's like oh God never promised that this life is going to be easy, but he promised he'll always be with you. We do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also do this thing where we're like, oh, but like, like life with God is just like, things just like, everything just got so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say better because they don't necessarily say that, but mm-hmm. I think that they mean that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, it is. it is better in in the sense of having access to Yahweh and hope and joy in the midst of the things but Ruslan brought up this point that said Jesus said 
pick up your cross mm -hmm. and follow me. Mm -hmm. He said, what is the cross? The cross was a torture instrument. Yeah. He's literally telling you, following me is going, this is going to, there's going to be parts of this that's going to be torturous. Yeah. Torture. Yeah. Like, not like, you know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. like, we still do this thing where it's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't. I don't understand why, like, you know, I'm still struggling with the same things. It's like, well, you're you're not really walking through torture like that. Yeah. I, I know that in times where I'm struggling like that, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm coasting. Right. I'm chilling. And so I'm like, you know, yeah, this stuff is going to be, it's, it's going to be hard. Like, yeah. it's just going to be hard. And I think that that's why it kind of pours through in my music is like, I not to intentionally try and paint relationship with God as something that's dark and and hopeful, I mean hopeless because it, it's not. You know right. what I'm saying? I would absolutely and will absolutely like I choose life with God over life without God any day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I do think that we've done a disservice as the Western Church specifically mm -hmm. of making it look like. Even if you're in the hard stuff, what God's about to do, yeah, God's yeah. about to, yeah, yeah. Sometimes God's not about to, yeah. Sometimes God already did, and this is where you're at, yeah. I, that sounds dark, <laughs> but we gotta remember, bro. Yeah, all of the disciples were murdered. Yeah. Not died peacefully of old age. Yeah. With their families around them. Mm -hmm. Like, they were murdered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and the, Stephen the, was murdered by somebody Steve, who became Stephen a disciple. Stephen was murdered <laughs> by the one who wrote half the Bible. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He got him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's like, yeah. it's like, yo, I, where, like, what do we do? Yeah. The, so the stuff... You know, so some of it, yeah, yes, some of like the dark feel of it and like the depressing feel of it comes from like a wanting to push back on that. What I think is a false narrative of, of yeah, the way. Yeah, you no, know? that's that's good. I mean, yeah, it's like life with God is absolutely um, better than life without God. Like there's no comparison, but um, or I, I say and when. Paul is being beaten with like 39 times with a cat of nine tails, like the homie being beaten with the cat of nine tails without God is worse than being beaten with yeah. God, but it's still being beaten with a yes, cat of nine you're tails. You're still getting, you're still getting that. You that know what I mean? Butt tapped, you like, know what I'm saying? like, it's, <laughs> like it's, it's, it, it still is what it is. And I yeah. do think that, uh, that, no, I, I like that. I like this, like your creativity, uh, you know, from my perspective, I'll say for your creativity, it's it kind of mirrors a lot of the creativity that is in Scripture. And I don't mean mm -hmm. creativity as in Scripture is not true, but even that dichotomy is something that we just do. Like we yeah. think, uh, oh, it's creative. We can't use that to describe Scripture because we believe Scripture is true. So that can't yeah. be creative. It's like, yeah, but it's written in a creative way. Yeah. Like it's written with poetry and narrative and hyperbole and metaphor and yeah. all types of stuff. Um, and scripture is at times very dark. Yes. Very violent. Yes. Um, Uncomfortably. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't read like, you know, pocket full of sunshine um, by Natasha Bedingfield. It's a real song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey. Right. Yeah. I had a thought, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna let it go. Um do what? Let it rock. Let it rock, like just keep going. let it rock. Let the thought go. I was just thinking it's it's interesting that you know that song, but you don't know rap songs from that time period. That's all. That's all that I was it's the only thing that I was gonna go. That's why I, I was gonna I was just gonna keep going because we're you know. But <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, but no, I think that I think your music that doesn't have a bow tied on it at the end that, OK, this song is a love song and that's all it is. It's a love song or this song is about um, 
something that's not going well in relationships or something that's not going well internally, or it's just about anger and it doesn't get better at the end. You know what I mean? Those <laughs> things. <little> ones. <laughs> yeah. Those, I think that um, there's an argument to be made that those um, represent um, what life with God is like on a day-to-day basis. I think sometimes Christian songs try to put the whole story. Yeah. Into one the song. whole story of humanity and faith into in one three song. minutes. So it ends, and I, I, I kind of get it from that perspective. It's like, okay, so it ends in a place of joy or the whole song is about joy. And it's like, I, I get that. And I do think that, that there's a need for that and that helps a lot of people. But I also think that there is a need for songs that will help us with today. Mm-hmm. Today, I am not in... Uh, perfect bliss and union with God. Yeah. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I, you know, somebody just stole all my intellectual property and I'm, you know. Yeah. And 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 I'm angry. Yeah. And and the other thing is, like I was talking with KB about this in in Tampa. And I mean, I, 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 I feel like we really don't like we talk about the grace of God, but we don't leave, we don't leave any room for it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't think God is looking at me and going, John, every single song needs to be a perfect theological statement about about uh uh me. Because even now, it's like my my theology is not perfect. None of our theology is, it it can't be. Mm-hmm. It can't be perfect because we don't fully we don't fully understand him, mm-hmm. and so it's like it can be as close as as we believe to be right about mm-hmm. this, but like you Which know, it's still gonna be an unbelievable goal. Unbelievable between gap. The the most accurate theological idea and who God is. Yes, infinite gap. And so it's like by necessity, God is like God is. It says in the scripture, I forget, I forget where. But like it's it's faith that's that's pleasing God. Yeah. Right. And so it's like if I'm doing this in faith, it's like, you know what? Like I'm gonna write this song about where I'm at with with God. I have a song that I mean it's not out, but I wrote it about um, you know, my friend Tanner that passed from mm-hmm. cancer. Mm-hmm. And in the song, I'm like, it says, it seems like you just take what you want. You say what you want and you break what you want. Mm. I don't know what you want. That's what it says. Mm-hmm. That's the hook. Mm-hmm. The song doesn't end with, but I will follow you mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. my days. Like it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is what it feels like right now. And I don't understand you. I don't mm. understand what you want. Cause this is what it seems like. God's not like, you better fix that. Like, yeah. it's not, he's like, no, he's like, yeah, I understand how that can feel like that because yeah. you have a very limited knowledge a very limited point of view and you don't see everything that I see. So I get it. And I understand that it feels like that. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I I don't, I don't think he's like, now go fix it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this thing happened. It hurt. And I like, I don't understand you. Yeah. And if I had that thought of like, everything has to be a perfect theological statement about, about God. Then it's like, I'd be, that's, I would be in sin for that song. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, And I think that, I think a key difference between, you know, somebody, if somebody was asking, well, you know, what's, what's the difference between like making a statement towards that to God and um, like denying God? Well, the difference is you're taking those things to him. So it's the difference between walking with somebody that you love and you're angry with them and you're telling them that, and y'all still continue, y'all still continue going to wherever you're going versus, Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm angry about this thing. So that means that I'm breaking relationship with you yeah. or you're not real. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. My pastor said something to me a couple years ago when I was in a, I was in a pit. You understand? It was dark. I'm talking dust and dark. <laughs> it was bad. Bro, you keep saying his name. He's going to pop up. Bro. <laughs> he's going to pop it's up. Beetlejuice, I don't know crazy. exactly where he is. I know he was in <laughs> Panama two weeks ago. I don't know. He said, 
he it was it was it was bad, right? And he was like, "Yo, my pastor said you're 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 in the dark right now, and and God is holding your hand." And you know what? He's like, scream at him. He's like, scream at him, yell at him, do all the things you need to do. Just don't let go of his hand. Yep. He's like, he he can take it. He's not afraid of your anger. Right. He's not scared of you. Mm-hmm. Like any more than you'd be afraid of your son. Mm-hmm. Like I watched my I watched my uh, my nephew throw a tantrum with my brother one time. Uh, he was he was mad. He's two, and my brother was holding my nephew's hand and my nephew's just uh, 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 giving it to him. He's with all of his might. And my brother is sitting there and he goes, it's like, Moses, you, are you angry right now? <laughs> just talking to him just like that. Yeah. He's, I was like, the boy's obviously angry. <laughs> <laughs> he's giving you the business. I hear these hits. Yeah. I know he's too, but that you, that has to feel like something. Yeah. You know, and he's just, he's giving it to his dad, but he's like, he's holding his hand and he's, he's just sitting in there. He's sitting there looking at him like, man, I, I get that you're angry right now. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to just let you, I'm going to let you rock. Yeah. We're going to talk after. I'm going to let you rock for right now. Right. And I was like, oh wow. Yeah. That's what, that's what God does with me. Cause I, I have deep anger issues and I got, I'd be, I'd be angry with him. But doing that is different than I'm out. I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm leaving the house. Right. Then you can't do nothing. Yeah. And I mean, like what kind of father would, you know, yeah. a dad be if their kid was like slammed the door in their room and said, I hate you. Yeah. Right. That like that happens every single day. Yeah. And if a dad then was like, I hate you too. Get out. I never want to <laughs> see you again. I'm done financially supporting you. I'm done caring for you. You can't be around me anymore i'm i'm disowning you and there's no way for us to have a relationship as far as i'm concerned we would say that is a bad dad yes bad father we would say that is a bad dad you're doing a bad job and the scripture says that god is the best father anything that we have seen good in our dads or whatever we imagine as the best father that's just a a shadow of who god is so if we would say, and I mean, anybody would say that, I mean, unless they're, you know, somebody's just wacky and silly and zany, yeah. but most people would say if a father, if, if a kid says, I hate you and the father kicks them out on the street, it's a bad father. Yeah. But that is how we imagine God. Yeah. A lot of times is like right. people like, you know, oh, you know, you can't, you can't be angry at God or you can't say a specific thing or like. It's just fear that he's going to kick you out on the streets, essentially. And it's like, well, I mean, that is a lack of faith in itself because you're not believing that he is a good father. You know what he said, what he says about himself. Right. You're not believing him. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. It's very true. Yeah. You, um, you said something earlier. Oh yeah. It was the, uh, uh, you said that something you learned from me and I actually caught heat for that when i posted that but yeah, i think it was you. i think it was um instead of asking is this christian art instead ask yeah, yeah. as a christian yeah what yeah. do i hear god saying through this art you understand they didn't like that they didn't like that no they were mad yeah but the people's ability to understand nuance is minuscule you know what i'm saying like they can't like but but you need to you know what I'm saying? Like, the, because the, the scripture is full of it. Mm-hmm. Scripture is full of nuance. Yeah. You don't want to hear that, do you? <laughs> you don't want to hear that. You don't like that. No, but it's like, I mean, I I just have a very big view of God. Like, I actually believe, truly, that God created everything. Yeah. That is my starting point. And if I believe that he created Everything, the universe or the multiverse, if there is one. I'm not saying there is. I'm just Definitely saying not. I'm just saying that if there is one, he created it. For sure there's whatever not. exists, he created. That's all I'm trying to say. For sure, definitely not. All right. So if he created everything and then somebody use, uses the raw material that he created to make something that doesn't explicitly glorify him, that doesn't mean that there's nothing for me to learn through that because yeah. they still no matter what. And that's that's the funny and the ironic and the beautiful thing is even if they use it 
against him, they still had to use his stuff. Yeah. They still had to use it. So there's still going to be his, his DNA in it because yeah. there's no material to use except what he made. Yeah. So there's still something that I can learn. Wow. Oops. There's still something I can learn Whoops. from that, you know? Whoops. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that they really don't want to hear this. Oh, the crazy thing is that scripture definitely holds that view because, Oh yes. Uh Oh, Mm-hmm. There's times in scripture Whoops. all the time where scripture will pull from mm. other world views mm-hmm. and play off of that mm-hmm. because they were written to those cultures that understood yeah. that that's that that's what was happening. But our Americanized version of Christianity you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to. You don't know Paul that. knew Cretan oh, yeah. poetry. Yeah, straight up. He quoted the 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 Cretan poets to the. To the people on Crete, yeah. he said, "Even your poets say." And then he said something crazy like, "Crete, no yachty." Yeah. So, you know, when we listen to Cole or when we listen to the whoever, like it's the same thing. Listen to Kendrick, like okay, those are those are kind of baptized one. When we're listening to uh, to yachty or four bats or whoever, like two hundred for your nails, you know, uh, being well versed in the culture so that you can positively impact it is something that is not new and it is in it is in scripture and that's just the obvious ones there's also like you know you can get into what they were doing with like uh the creation stories and stuff like that oh oops you know don't got enough time for that <laughs> don't even have time for that <laughs> you, you we don't even got time for that yeah. you're scared baby yeah. you're scared yeah uh, so we we knew when we started this that we were gonna have to do a part one and part two. We're not even halfway through the stuff that I want to talk to you about. Yeah, that's good stuff. And uh, and the the you know the people can't get enough of you, John Keith. It's, it just is what it is. Uh, much to my uh, chagrin. What um, the f- whoa, you know, whoa. The people can't get enough of you. So excuse me. We're gonna end. We're gonna end. Can I finish? We're gonna end episode one. With some hot seat questions, all right? And like I told y'all last time, I don't know if this is going to be called hot seat. It might be called, like, control room or something like that. I got to get a better name. Chagrin was the craziest word to use. Um. All right. You ready? I'm about to just ask yeah, you rapid fire. You got to do the first thing go. Here we go. on your mind. All right? Go. Uh, if animals could talk, which one do you think would be the rudest and why? Definitely. Uh, zebras would be racist as like like they're kind of supremacists because they got like yeah. right okay yeah i th- feel like that's a that's about biracial people but uh what is your worst song in your opinion worst song uh i don't want to say it because i don't want people to go look no nah, you got to say it okay no i won't you got to say it i won't if you don't say it i'm gonna leak the the movie you i'm gonna leak you're the, a son of a you I'm don't go, you got to say the song or i'm gonna leak the, song the movie. Is called the song is called you know what? The song's called Holy Smoke. <laughs> You're so stupid. The song's called Holy You're Smoke. You're dumb, bro. I'm leaking the movie. Y'all check the description. I'm leaking. I'm leaking the movie. Um, all right. What's the funniest prank you've ever pulled on someone or had pulled on you? Uh, I had had pulled on me. People don't prank me. Um, the funniest prank I've pulled on somebody. Ooh. Um. One time I went to pick up a pizza and i parked in the red zone and then there were some people this isn't really like a prank but this is what's coming to my brain there was some there was a group of girls they were so mad at they didn't see me park but they saw my car and they started talking crazy about the car that was parked in the red zone and then i joined in with them i was like yeah the dude's a douchebag and she was like you know honestly he thinks he owns the world i was like honestly he's trash he's arrogant it's arrogant is the problem yeah i was like and and, and to be honest when he gets back you should tell him she's like yeah. no and her friend's like no jasmine tell him dude you should honestly like, you know maybe i will and i was like because honestly prick yeah guy's a prick yeah and then i got my pieces and i hit and they were like <laughs> oh no and i was like but you're not wrong though it is arrogant yeah yeah, yeah. it's just me right appreciate you guys and then yeah. i went and got in the car and drove home yeah yeah pretty good you got uh athanasios laughing so it's pretty good um the homie ati no he doesn't no well you're, you're you don't have a nickname no. thanos. thanos the the nick that's no, terrifying okay. he, he doesn't like the nicknames because his name is like eternal yeah or anti-death but then 
all of the nicknames just mean death. death. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> Thanos is <laughs> unbelievable. All right, I got one more question, and then we're and then we're this the end of episode one, and okay. then we're gonna do a part two. Okay. All right. What is your specific problem with John Keith? Why is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this? Yep. This is a part. Everyone got this question. This is the last Holy question. Holy crap! <laughs> this is so wild. Why is this? <laughs> I need a specific problem. My specific problem with John, I don't know. I what, pick one. Too talented, too handsome. Oh, here we go. His he's got really cool style. I don't know. His yeah. music is great. Uh huh. He's, he's extremely sensitive nipples. That's actually the one. That's the actual that's problem. The one. Okay. Extremely sensitive. That's fine. All right. Well, I guess that's the uh, that's the end of episode one with John Keith. That's uh, your boy. No big deal. Creative control. We out. <laughs>